February in the North Country. And that means when I look outside, though I see birds and occasionally I see rabbits or foxes or in my neighborhood, even the occasional coyote here in Minneapolis. While those animals are moving around, much of the earth is in a time of dormancy. Dormancy, rest. Nothing needs to be watered. It's all covered with a blanket of snow and frozen deep into the ground. People say to me, you're a gardener. Don't you wish you lived somewhere where you could garden year round? Doesn't this dormancy get on your nerves? Don't, don't you wish you could be somewhere planting now or growing now? And I know that some of you live in climates where in fact in February, it is a wonderful growing season. And I'm grateful to you for that because I'm probably eating food from where you are. But where I am, I really deeply appreciate the gift of dormancy. It's not just the gift that I can look outside and not feel one bit responsible to go out and do anything, kind of the way a parent feels when their child is finally sleeping. They can take a breath and relax. And here in Minnesota, lots of us in this season collect seed catalogs and start dreaming about what we'll do differently next year and what we might grow that we never grew before. You know, I, I have big plans. Every year I try something new and now's the time to imagine what I might try. And it's not even time here to put seedlings into trays and put them under grow lights in the basement. I do that in late March so that I can plant them in mid to late May outside when the earth is finally ready. No, the dormant season is a time of rest. And for the trees and the perennials, it's a time when the roots get to strengthen. When the energy's in the roots, it's not out there growing leaves or fruit or doing all that work. It's just soaking in nurturance in the roots. I think there are wonderful lessons for we who are human in that, in this 24-7, 365 day a year world that we live in, when do we get to have times of dormancy? In some climates, I know the dormant season is when it's too hot to grow anything or do anything. I was so stunned a few years ago, I was visiting a friend in the south of Greece. I know, don't hate me. And, um, and I was reading, she had a story about Persephone and Demeter lying there. So I picked it up to read. It's a story about Persephone being chased to the underworld by Hades and her mother Demeter going with her. And that is the season when they're underground, when nothing can grow. And here in Minnesota, that season when they are underground and nothing can grow is of course winter. Well, in the south of Greece, where this story, I might add, originated, I was stunned to read that the time was when it was too hot. I've never been to Greece in late summer, but my friends who live there say, you just follow the shade around and try your best to stay out of the sun for at least the month of August and often July as well. So that's the season in Greece that's when nothing grows, that startled me because from a Northern perspective, hibernation and dormancy is all about coldness. And yet it also can be about heat. That's the wisdom of the earth. The earth figures out ways to make it work. And despite all of people's ideas to rule the earth, to make the earth conform to our needs and our expectations of what the earth should deliver. The creatures still teach us. In the north, I'm particularly interested in bears. There's a bear center up in Ely, Minnesota, where you can watch bears who are hibernating when the cubs are born and you, you can just watch them. And people do by the millions watch these black bears who are, who are hibernating 
And, and then I heard, my friend told me about this North American frog that completely dies when it gets cold. I mean, its heart stops beating. Everything about it completely freezes. They say that its blood turns to antifreeze and it just seems like it is completely dead for the winter. And then when the spring comes and warm weather comes, it thaws out and comes back to life. We see that with the flowers, you know, they, they just say, okay, I've given it my all, I'm done, and say goodbye. And then the perennials in the spring, they're back again. The roots having soaked in all of that nurturance that they need to be beautiful and to shine again in the spring. So I've taken dormancy seriously, not only that here in the North, I sleep more, I love the long dark nights and, you know, they're darkest around the solstice, which has gone by. But in January, February, there are still long nights here and they're very nurturing. And that time of slowing down, which is real here. I mean, just literally to go somewhere, it's slower. You have to scrape your car out of the snow. Sometimes you have to dig it out of the snow. You have to help your neighbors do that and, you know, you... It just takes longer to get everywhere. People don't go out as much. A lot of us hunker down, stay home more. And there, there's something wonderful about that. There's something very healing about that. I don't know when it's really hot, how people accommodate that. I do know that here in the North, we slow down and we're taking the wisdom of the earth, the gift that the earth gives us, the gift of dormancy, the gift of rest, the gift of knowing that there is a season to everything and that after in the fall, after the plants are done, they're really done again until spring. And so in winter, we can wish it were otherwise or we can be grateful for it. But whatever we think, the trees and the plants are going to have their Sabbath. They're going to have their time of rest. So I invite you to learn from the earth in this way, as I do, to take it in, to take it seriously, to respect the seasons and to accommodate them with your own life and your own living. May this season, which in the north is dormancy, and I know for some of you in the south, is springtime, bring renewal and rest and refreshment and revitalization May we learn some of the resilience of the earth.